Cougs house. The Houston Cougars are watching the NCAA head one step closer to being a true, full-fledged, professional minor league. And that helps Houston. You are Locked On Cougs, your daily podcast on the Houston Cougars, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to the Locked On Cougs, today the podcast all about your Houston Cougars. I'm your host, Houston-born teacher and coach, Parker Ainsworth. And whether you're a Houston fan or just a hater came to by, thank you for making Locked On Cougs your first listen of the day. If you want to join the conversation but don't know what to say, Tell us in the comment section down below what your favorite type of french fry is. Crinkle cut, waffle, curly, steak cut, etc. Today's show is brought to you by FanDuel, America's number one sports book, and more on that in a second. We got all kinds of things to talk about with the Forever Cougs, the thing I'm really excited about for this summer in terms of the basketball program uh, updates over there. We've got a big story, though, here at the top that I want to talk about first in terms of what the latest is from Pete Thamel, and then second, what the impact will be for the University of Houston. So let's jump on in because Monday evening, Thamel dropped a big-time article via ESPN.com outlining the latest in a large court case we've been kind of peripherally following here at Locked on Kooks because the impact it's going to have on college sports. Now, this article came out of a series of meetings that attorneys and other counsel have been having in Dallas DFW area, it sounds like, because that's coincidentally where the CFP group meets as well. But according to Thamel, the article reads that uh, leaders of college sports are in, quote, deep discussions to reach a legal settlement that would likely lay out the framework for sharing revenue with athletes in a future NCAA business model. Now, this is specifically referencing the court case that is house first the NCAA, which is the case that argues the NCAA is breaking the law by restricting how athletes make money on NIL, saying there's only certain ways it can and can't work, right? Uh, that is going to court, if it didn't get settled beforehand, in January of 2025. It's the first of a series of lawsuits here, and so it's kind of the most pertinent in terms of the timetable here. Now, again, this meeting happened in DFW. It featured uh, legal counsel, NCAA lawyers, uh, plaintiff attorneys, and NCAA president Charlie Baker. Um, sounds like this multi-billion dollar settlement is actually being discussed and what that looks like, what that payout looks like. Um, you could see school-wide revenue sharing of $20 million. We're seeing that number tossed around some um, in part because Texas A&M AD Trev Alberts recently told a local report or local paper that you could see 15 to $20 million added to their budget for, quote, a new expense category. And everyone's kind of taking that and running with it, right? Because what new expense outside of bringing in a brand new $20 million sport could like Texas A&M be running with? And then when you factor in the timing of that earlier with the Stamel article that describes this conversation being had of multi-billion dollars across all of the NCAA, People are putting the two and two together. Admittedly, we could all be wrong here, but the two and two are getting put together, obviously. Um, now, the House case is one or the first of three really big cases being tried here. Um, and it sounds like the NCAA is preparing to lose, if not settle in these cases. And um, this is why the settlement came out of court, I guess, because they, they realize that they're going to probably lose on this end. Um the NCAA's athletes, college athletes, are being represented by a guy named Jeffrey Kessler. Um, and Kessler represents the athletes in a number of these cases, including Carter versus the NCAA, which is the case that argue, try being taken to court later, uh, which is arguing that NCAA cannot prevent schools from paying players in a legal sense, right? So what you have is that the same attorneys representing the players, the athletes in both instances, and the NCAA is like realizing, oh, crap, this could all be about to come down. And now working with this attorney, Jeffrey Kessler, about finding some sort of a settlement to kind of get all this, all the cases put to the wayside. Now, 
And this is all Sam will read between the lines based on what he's hearing from these meetings. But it does sound like that you're hearing some of these settlements being like numbers are being drawn up, right? Like you don't get to that point in the course proceedings if you're not worried about the way it's going to go. And it sounds like the NCAA as an institution is worried about where it's going to go. At least worried enough that you're having them figure out, okay, well, if we went down this route, what's this going to cost, right? Uh, obviously, it costs a lot more than the court case will be, but the reality is is that that court case money might be sunk, right? <laughs> like the, the truth is, is or I'm sorry, the NCAA paying out the players may be sunk. The How long you drag out the court cases may be what you know, grows or shrinks here. Now, ESPN and Dan will himself say specifically in the article – that it's not that the two have to get any settlement done. Obviously, they could take this to court in January 25, and the next one comes up in 2026 and kind of do it one at a time and kind of stretch this out, um, really kind of you know elongate the process of finding this. It's not that they even have to settle this between now and January 25 either. There are ways to push back those dates uh, as well. But the two line didn't read here. The, uh, the TLDR for the millennial folks or... or Anyone looking at like, okay, what does this mean in layman's terms, right? What's happening is that you're leading towards eventually the NCAA being forced to offer a collective bargaining agreement with the athletes like professional sports. And the way that that happens is that the Supreme Court, which is where this would go to very quickly because of the federal uh, nature of this, the size and scope. Uh, you're looking at, can the NCAA call someone who works this many hours and makes this much money for the school, can these NCAA institutions, or can the NCAA keep their institutions, I should say, from paying them like professionals, like workers, like employees? That gets tricky and complicated in a lot of ways. you got to worry about things like health care and benefits and stuff like that, and that's all a lot of things to take into account here obviously but at the end of the day at least the stance of me and my and this show is that at these guys are working like employees and making millions if not billions of dollars for the institution there's got to be some more reciprocity there besides saying well now we're gonna let you have some money coming in your pocket from boosters right that's all the NIL deal is as it currently stands, right? Is that institutions have opened up the gates to let boosters pay the players for them. That's still not adequate, right? Frankly, an NIL deal is just a sponsorship deal, right? We see pro athletes get sponsorship deals and their salary at the same time as compensation for their work and compensation for their brand. Right now, college athletes are only getting compensation for their Brand. It's why you're not seeing the NIL deals necessarily pair up always with the highest caliber athletes. Now, that's not to say that a top tier Heisman candidate quarterback isn't one of the most expensive NIL deals in the transfer portal or whatever, but it is to say that it's not a direct one to one always. It's not necessarily the point. What the cases like House and uh, Carter versus the NCAA are both both separate cases, but what they're looking at is, can the NCAA actually limit this and regulate this legally? And the answer is very clearly no. I mean, your local grocery store couldn't just say, oh, well, you know, instead of paying all our guys that work for us at the grocery store, we're going to let them like get sponsorship deals with Dr. Pepper, and they'll be talking to you about Dr. Pepper on your way out the door. Like, Generally speaking, if these people are making money for the institutions, they're, they're employees in every sense except for the legal, right? And so it sounds like the athletes have a fairly strong case here. It sounds like the uh, walls may be falling down on all of this thing. And what we're getting at in the second segment is that that's actually a good thing for Houston. I'll tell you why in a second. But first, I got to tell you about how are you going to go see all these games? And the best way to go get tickets to watch the Houston Cougars and these athletes or Houston Astros or uh, TBT this summer or if you want to go watch a comedian or go to the theater, anything happening, 
wherever you are. You got to get to get to Game Time. Download the Game Time app today. Use code Locked On College for twenty dollars off. Game Time is really special in that the deals get better the closer you get to the event. Flash deals, last minute deals, zone deals, all find ways to get you to the game to the event with more money in your pocket. I like that they give you a seat view for the venue and the kind of event you're at. So if you're going to like Toyota for a concert, that's obviously going to be set up differently than would be for a basketball game. It kind of show, it shows you exactly what it's going to look like for that type of event. They get the lowest price guarantee. Game time will credit you 110% of the difference if you find tickets in the same section and row at a cheaper price. They, again, they'll credit you 110% of the difference. So download the Game Time app today and take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On College for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply again, create an account and redeem code Locked On College, L O C K E D O N C O L L E G E, for $20 off. Download Game Time today. Last minute t- tickets, lowest prices, gear run teed. All right, I also want to tell you one way to keep on winning is to get with our buddies over at FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook because it's playoff time in the NBA, playoff time in NHL, baseball's in full swing, all kinds of fun things get in on the action at FanDuel. And right now, new customers get 150 bucks in bonus bets guaranteed. It's 150 bucks guaranteed win or Lose, but on everything from slap shots to home runs to slam dunks, all in an app that's safe, secure, and super easy to use. And what are you waiting for? If it's fanduel.com slash locked on, make your first bet an automatic win. Fanduel, America's number one sports book. All right. Now, I know that there's some folks that like the way college sports were and are upset at this point. Like, why are college sports changing? What's the big deal here? What is wrong with a bunch of guys that were basically involved in after school, you know, uh, clubs of sorts that just have me really good at football? And I, I get that sentiment, but in a lot of ways, this feels like Pandora's box has been opened. You can't get the toothpaste back in the tube. Any other metaphor for that, it's been too late, right? This is just where we were headed. Once you start seeing schools find ways to profit on this in the 70s and 80s and make big dollars in bowl games, this was just a matter of time, right? Once the Rose Bowl became more than a spectacle with parade and a football game, what else was it going to – it's always going to lead to this. It's just taken this much time. And there have been times where it moves really quickly, like the last four or five years, and times where it moves really slowly. But here's where you are. And I think this actually helps Houston if – the NCAA really becomes a collectively bargained professional sports league of sorts, right? If I say minor league, but really truthfully, with the way the NFL functions, the best 21-year-old football players in the world are playing in college, right? Um, here's how it helps Houston, though. Now, Houston got in the Big 12 at exactly the right time because the Big 12 is one of the power four conferences that as it stands now, cannot get left out of these decisions. It covers too much geographic space and has too much of a market share of the top brands in college sports. I understand that you know the SEC and the Big Ten will sit here and tell you about the money they bring in on TV revenue shares or whatever. Uh, what we both know, based on the kinds of deals your mark has struck and the kind of things that your mark has already ha- helped the conference do, not to even go into the past of all the building up this conference for about 20 years before that, the Big 12 is a brand that the NCAA will not be able to turn away from any sort of professionalization. And Houston just got in this thing. I mean, could not be getting into it at a better time. The first academic school year there in the conference is the 2023-24 school year. And we're looking at this court case happening potentially in January 2025. That's I mean, Could you pick better timing, honestly? So we're in the club now. We want to see this go through. The second thing I think that helps with Houston here, though, is that the CBA aspect of this could actually help Houston much like it helps smaller market teams in current American professional sports. Right? Think about it this way. The way you've got baseball set up, where they don't even really have a salary cap, but they have revenue sharing and they have different taxes on your uh, payroll taxes and stuff like that, right? And so what you see is things like the Colorado Rockies or the Miami Marlins or 
to some degree, even the normal year, a Houston Astros team are finding ways to stay competitive with the New York Yankees, the LA Dodgers, et cetera, even though those teams have monstrous payrolls, right? What you're seeing is different ways that A, those payrolls get taxed, and then B, that money gets distributed back into revenue sharing across the rest of the sports. Now, I'm really simplifying it before I see the comments start flying in about like how that's not exactly, I understand I'm oversimplifying a little bit. We also don't know what the CBA for college sports would be like. It could frankly be more like the NBA where you've got a flat tax for everything above this much money in the salary cap. You can't spend below this much money in the salary cap. And then you have the super luxury tax and so on to where you're essentially paying dollar to dollar, sometimes even up to almost $2 to dollar on salaries that you're paying to your guys. You have max contracts and stuff like that too, right? Without seeing exactly where it fits in, I think the idea is that these institutions will have to share revenue as part of the collective bargaining agreement. And there will be some say in how salaries are structured. Structure helps Houston. Revenue sharing helps Houston. Houston's a growing program. Had successful years? Absolutely. Had successful programs in the present tense? Absolutely. But in terms of revenue, bringing in sharing would only help Houston. Bringing in tax ceilings would only help Houston. Bringing in salary caps, max contracts would only help Houston because it would level the playing field in a way that makes Houston the hometown option for a lot of the athletes that are Otherwise, picking high dollars elsewhere, right? I think that's a really good thing for the University of Houston. I think we should be open to hearing about that because of how that helps. Now, I mentioned the idea of a max contract in the NBA. A max contract in the NBA, the similar type of model working out in college sports, could make Houston a monster, right? You think about it, you know, how much talent comes out of the city of Houston year in, year out, and does not go to the University of Houston and play football. Again, it's better than it was at different points in the last 70 years. But truthfully, there's a lot of talent. Like we just saw a very talented quarterback from Willis go to Florida, right? Willis just up the road. If there were only so many max contract spots on all the different teams across the country, you'd A, see more people get dispersed evenly across the different teams, but B, you'd put different people in different interesting, challenging predicaments. For example, that quarterback I mentioned from Willis, DJ Lagway, right? If he had a max contract in Florida that was the exact same dollar amount as the max contract would be in Houston, and he was basically measuring whether or not his sponsorship or NIL deals would be different. Obviously, Florida's got the Blue Blood brand, I don't know, whatever you want to call it, right? But he could also be selling a lot of car dealerships, cars at a lot of car dealerships in Houston near his hometown. And he's making the large chunk of change. The, the contract for playing in a max contract system would be the same. I, I think that those kinds of decisions, and that's, again, a simplified version of what it potentially could be, are ways that this all works for Houston if we can be open-minded enough to watch it work. Um, the teams that should be upset about this are the ones that are winning in the current system. The teams that are like winning where like, you know, Miami and John Ruiz money or all the oil field money of Texas and Texas A&M or, you know, the USC's of the world, the, the ones that are just oozing NIL dollars and just winning the, the current way it's set up should be upset that this is changing and Houston should be excited. This offers opportunity. This offers a level playing field. This offers rules, structure, and those things make us a lot more like these other teams that we're growing towards faster. And I think that's a really good sign. I'm excited about it. I, if you can't tell, I think that um, while it's you know hard to see an old thing go away, like the old version of college sports, you know, you also can't, you can't slow down time. It's going to go away. It's just a matter of when at this point. And so how it shifts, how it changes, as long as the Houston Cougars, let's find ways to make them the best. And I think there's the way, that's the way this thing is going. Now, I want to talk about some Cougars getting paid 
to play basketball this summer on the Forever Cougs team in my final segment here in a second. But first, while I'm talking about things I like to do, I am very, very competitive, and I've talked about this a lot. You know, I already said, okay, flag in the play. Park talks about this all the time. Blah, 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 right? But trust me, with Monopoly Go, it's worth talking about it because you can have so much fun with all the different things in this game. For example, you can team up with your friends and get in these time tournaments where you work together and build up on one another's boards. The more you win together, the more awesome prizes you unlock, and there's so much to get. There's unique stickers, cool new playing pieces, hilarious emojis to send back and forth while you're trash talking. Plus, in Monopoly Go, it feels exactly uh, like the old kind of game, but also with this new exciting twist with constantly changing tournaments and challenges. A ton uh, include their own unique mini games like Digging for Treasure or Robot Pachinko or all kinds of other stuff. There's, there's always new timed events to help you win big, massive, multipliers for everything you win or rent frenzies or all kinds of other fun monopoly games so there's always something to discover in monopoly go so get off the bench and go download it right now for free on the google play store or the app store game on all right so i want to remind folks of forever kooks here in this final segment because on Monday, tickets officially went for pre-set. You go to TBT when you Google it or the tournament.com, go to the basketball tournament while you're under there and get tickets to go see the Forever Cougs. Now, I imagine this is also hitting game time, so check out game time, see if the prices are better there right now. Um, but tickets are available, and the event itself in Houston is from July 19th to July 24th at the Fertitta Center. Now, the Houston Cougars the Cougar alum, I should say, on the roster as it presently stands are Damian Dotson, Dejan Ladiki Giroux, Devin Davis, Eric Wary Jr., Fabian White, Galen Robinson, Justin Gorham, Kyler Edwards, and Rob Gray. I want to shout out to Rob Gray. He's kind of the ringler to set this whole thing up. I think he also kind of had a big domino he knocked over when he pulled in Galen Robinson as well. I think what I like about this team is in a kind of unstructured environment. I don't know if you watched TBT before, but it's a lot of high-level basketball being played by alums of different programs. So like Houston's team is called the Forever Cougs. But within the basketball program, you've got a bunch of different teams um, from a bunch of different alma maters, like uh, the Dubois Dream from Pittsburgh. Um, St. Louis has uh, Daddy STL. Uh, the guys are the guys STL best Virginia is West Virginia. Austin zone is Texas. Um, the men of Mackey are the Purdue alumni nasty natty is Cincinnati, right? A bunch of other programs across the board here. I'm trying to see who else is worth mentioning. There's a, we are D three team. Uh, the zoo crew is Pittsburgh war ready or the war Eagle Auburn, uh, the Ville Louisville, right? Um, all kinds of different ways to get at, ways to find i should say like things that are similar between players like they all played at such and such a program houston's roster aside from being a bunch of former coups as opposed to like the d3 thing or the folks that have also done some dabbling in medical school thing there's one team like that or whatever um is that it's so many point guards so many point guard type guys for sure right i mean you could see any point dotson ladiki galen kyler Rob, even, you know, Eric Weary could bring the ball up. Something like this team very suddenly has a bunch of guys that can handle the basketball. And while this is high level basketball, in a lot of ways, if you're new to this, the tournament or the basketball tournament structure, um, it's not like crazy complex Princeton offenses. The offenses in the half court, when you're slowed down a little bit, are shot clock. But also, like, hey, let's just run a pick and roll and find an action right fast, right? Hey, let's make sure we get a switch here. And, pin it. and having guys that handle the basketball across the board here with some size, like Fabian White and Justin Gorm. I don't mean to say that you don't have any size down low, but suddenly having a lot of guys that handle the basketball means you've got a distinct advantage. And I really think Houston's done pretty well in this. Obviously, hosting helps as well. So get out and support again. It's from July 19th to the 24th 
at the Fertitta Center. Uh, Forever Cougs, they got cool merch as well. You can help support the guys. Uh, as Rob Gray's the one that kind of set it up, I think his like jersey, jersey t shirt thing is the one they're selling, but sweatshirts, t shirts, all kinds of fun stuff there as well. Um, excited to see, frankly, I mean, Galen plays in the G League. Ladiki has had some NBA experience as well, been in the G League. Uh, Damian Dotson played for a while in Cleveland. I, I think that it's worth pointing out like that's like he was a, he was a legitimate pro there for a minute. Kyler is in the G League. I think someone said he was on the Brooklyn G League team last. I saw guys here playing some real, real deal basketball. Um, you know, Fabian White playing over for the Metropolitan 92s. They had a famous player that, by the name of Victor Wimbanyama playing for them, right? I mean. Great programs, great programs. And so be interested to see how these coops fit together. Some guys have actually played together. Some guys have just know each other from the university connections. Following that, as we get towards that this summer, looking forward to watching Cougs play basketball. If you're looking forward to it, if you're looking forward to the NCAA turning into a semi-professional, if not fully professional, sports league, if you're looking to talk about Houston Cougar football as we get closer to the offseason uh, this summer, We'll be talking about it each and every day here at Locked On Coops. Make sure to subscribe, hit the bell so you know we're live, like, and comment. We're doing giveaways every 500 subscribers. We're up over 2,200 now, so the next big marker is 2,500. Can help us get there. We appreciate each and every thumbs up. Locked On Coops is proud of our Locked On Podcast. Your team, our Houston Cougars, every day. Go Cougs.